Hi, and thanks for watching this video on troubleshooting network and security inside VMware Cloud on AWS. My name is Martijn Smit, and I will be guiding you through a couple of features for VMC and AWS inside Realized Network Inside. So to start off, let's have a look at the SDDC concept. So Realized Network Inside categorizes all the SDDCs that are in your accounts and then lists them out here. Granted, we've only got one SDDC in this case, but you can see that we have a list of the SDDC and then a quick view of the overview of the SDDC itself. So you can have a look at the region, the NSX manager, etc. Let's, let's just open up the SDDC dashboard. So first off, we have an overview of every single configuration item within this SDDC. So you can have a look at the VMs, the security groups, all the segments, all the file rules. The applications that are spanning over this VMC in, 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 on AWS. We also have a look at the entities that have been changed in the last 24 hours. So you can see the security groups that have been added, new VMs. Let's just have a look, quick look at this one. These are the VMs that have been added in the last 24 hours. We can have a quick look at the amount of disks, where the, the data store, the CPU, memory, OS, ooh, Windows XP, that's not good. All of this information is available here, but we can also dive deeper into the VM dashboard. But I'm going to stick to the uh, the SDDC right now. So the uh, the new segments for the last 24 hours, new file rules that have been added or changed file rules that have uh, been changed in the last 24 hours. And let's have a look at one of these as well. So these file rules basically list everything that has been added in the last 24 hours. We can see the uh, the action, the rule IDs, the source and destination for this file rule, whether it's enabled or not, what port it's located on, everything that you need. And you can also drill down into the specific file rule itself if you'd like to get a little bit more information, but at least you have the uh, the overview of the file rule changes here. So we also have the quick overview of the properties. So it's well, what is the SDDC ID, which organization is it in, which region, which vCenter, and then the public and internal IP address of the, uh, the vCenter plus the NSX manager. So you can use this as a quick springboard to connect to this NSX manager if you'd like. And then we move on to security based. For Realize Network Insight can actually help you plan out micro segmentation. So we have this, this communication flow representation here where you can see that in this case, the segments that have been talking to each other and to the internet and shared services. I can also group this by application, for example. So in this, this SDC, there's a couple of applications that are running. You can see a web app, you can see this uh, Imagic uh, hybrid application, and you can use this, this information in order to plan out the final rules for this specific application to secure it. So if I open up this donut slice, I get foremost all the services that are hosted in this group, the external services that it's using, the raw flows. I can even drill down into the actual communication between this application and other applications and get the graphs here as well. But I'm mostly interested in these recommended file rules. In this case, we can see that we have recommended file rules based on the actual flows that have been happening on this application in order to implement this in the NSX file rule. You can see it's based on the application. So in this case, Tanzu Tees has been communicating over this Imagic app over port 80. You can also see that there's internet connectivity coming in from the internet towards this Imagic app. And you can basically use this in order to secure this application. If you don't want to just copy and paste it from here or type it over <laughs> even, we have the availability to export this as a CSV. We can also export this as XML, and then there are some scripts available to, uh, to automatically import this into the VMC firewall directly, instead of having to do that manually. So once you've secured the application, uh, we can do some analytics on it as well. So we have the uh, all the VMs that are talking to the internet from this SDDC. Also very interesting is we have the egress traffic coming from this SDDC towards the internet and then a ton of events around what's happening inside this SDDC, but I will get back to that BGB status in a bit. If you want to have a quick look on which VMs are talking the most in this, uh, this SDC, you can uh, have a look at the top talkers. You can group this by VM as well, but also by application. By far, you can see that this VM is talking the most uh, out of every VM that is in this SDDC. All right, so going back up. So this is more proactive, analytic, keeping control on the inventory in the file rules, etc. 
but also operationally for day two operations, there are also a bunch of features here. So first off, I'd like to have a look at the events. So you already got a sneak peek from this one earlier, but we can see that uh, one of the BGP neighbors is, uh, is currently down, making it unable to pass traffic over that BGP. I will get back to this specific virtual interface in a minute, but I just want to show you the timeline first. So Network Insight keeps track of when something happens. So you can use this as a time machine to scroll back in time and, and have a look at all the events that have been occurring for the last week or so. So you can see that there's a heap of events all over the place. We can zoom in and have a look at what is actually happening on that specific time. And in this case, everything is related to BGP. And it's not just the 01. You can also see the 02 here. But let's zoom in on, on that, that virtual network interface. So first off, I have the uh, the overview of it. In what SDC is it connected? What VMC Direct Connect is it connected into? The uh, virtual interface ID, so the AWS side of the ID. Same for the Direct Connect ID. So you can use these, these IDs in order to communicate with AWS in order to troubleshoot any of this. Uh, we also have the local and the remote IP address. So the local is the one that's connected to NSX. The remote is connected to the co-location co router, which in this case might be having an issue because the BGP status is, is, is down. So all of these events are historically capped. You can also see the timing that it passed on. So in this case, we have a 10 minute outage here we have a uh, just a seven minute outage, but it's all a lot of outages for, uh, for a very quick time. So all of this is kept here. So in this case, I wanna go back to my color location router and have a look at why that specific router is, is unavailable, but I'll take you through another troubleshooting scenario. So when you're looking at troubleshooting your connection between your on-premises data center and the uh, VMware Cloud and AWS infrastructure, you might get connectivity issue between two VMs, one on-prem and one in VMC. So in this case, I'm going to open up a path between two VMs, a database and an app VM, one that's located on on-prem, that's the database, and then the app layer is located in VMC. And then I'll get the entire path topology and let me just open up this or maximize this. And as you can see here, the entire path is actually being drawn out. We can see the, uh, the on-prem VM here. This is the database. It traverses through a NSX distributed router, the NSX edge, a couple of VLANs and uh, logical switches. Comes to a physical device. And let's have a quick peek at what type of device this is. You can see it's a Cisco device, a Cisco Nexus 7K actually. We have the serial number, the routing table that's applicable to this uh, to this path and everything that you need in order to, uh, to troubleshoot this. And if there are any issues on any object here, you can actually see the exclamation mark. So then it turns into another physical device, which is going to be the co-location router, I believe. Yep, the AWS router, same Cisco 7K. And then it connects over the VMware Direct Connect. And a quick overview on the uh, Direct Direct Connect, so you can see the virtual interface name, ID, the Direct Connect ID, local remote IP addresses, and a quick look on whether this be a, the BGP status for this connection is actually up or down. And then it traverses into the NSX environment within the VMware Cloud Native US. So if I open up this firewall, for example, I get the gateway firewall for this VMC environment, and also the applicable firewall rules that are applied to this specific path. So I was talking about the exclamation mark. So if there's any issue with the device that you're looking at that's in the path, it will actually highlight that. So if I open up this NSG Edge, you can see we have three problems. And beyond that, we have all the information that we would need, like OCPF, routing table, etc. So two of these problems seems to be a conversion item. These are not, not that important. But then we have a high memory usage reported for this NSX infrastructure VM. So we probably want to go ahead and upgrade this NSX edge before it gets too congested. So we have a lot more information around uh, the troubleshooting path, etc. But I want to stick to the VMware Cloud and AWS specific features here. So let's have a quick look at something else that's pretty cool. So if I look at flows, for example, so traffic flows, I can also have a look at all the flows that flow over the specific direct connect. 
So you might recognize this uh, 7224 here, that, that was the, uh, the BGP AS number that the Direct Connect is configured on. So this is all the network flows that flow over that Direct Connect. You can add filters are based on VMs or based on the traffic types such as internet or east-west, etc. You can have a look at the flow details here as well. So in this case, we have this flow from this specific VM toward this IP address over port 443. And there's a lot of context here. So we have the VM that is flowing over the source, destination, security groups, network, service endpoints, traffic type, everything is here. Something else. If you want to have a better look at capacity management, for example, we can also do a graph for the entire direct connect. So because we have all this information, we can correlate that and aggregate that into one single graph. So right now we're looking at the graph that this connection is experiencing. So you can use this graph in order to capacity manage this, uh, this direct connect. So if you can see that it's going over a specific threshold, like 80% of the link speed, so I will leave you with this VMC STDC dashboards because this is the place where you will get started with all the information that for your life's network collects. And every single event and problem is also highlighted here. So if there are any issues with your VM, VMware Cloud and AWS infrastructure, for your life's network inside will highlight that, plus all the capacity management, the analytics that are on this page. If you want to learn more, please click on the links in the description below. Thank you for watching.